Hi, my name is Lynn and I'm the science editor for The Sun. Here with you today to talk about what you need to know for the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse. On April 8th, a total solar eclipse is going to go from Mexico to Maine across the Americas. A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon is between the Earth and the Sun, therefore casting a shadow on the planet. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Collins, weather editor here at The Sun. I'm here to demonstrate how the solar eclipse is going to work. I have this ping pong ball, which represents the moon, and a tennis ball, which represents the sun. The sun is much bigger than the moon. In fact, it's 400 times bigger than the moon. The moon is also 400 times closer to the earth, you, than the sun. The moon will actually cover the sun in the sky. And that's when we see a solar eclipse. The line of totality refers to the line that the moon's shadow takes when it crosses the planet. In this line, the moon will block the sun completely, turning day into night. If you're outside of the path of totality and the moon isn't completely blocking the sun, this is known as a partial eclipse. And this is the kind of eclipse that's going to happen in Ithaca. At around 3.23 p.m. in Ithaca, the moon will cover the sun the most, but it won't cover it completely. If you want to travel to see the total eclipse, the edge of totality is just about 40 minutes away, but at the edge, you'll only see the total eclipse for about 30 seconds. Before the eclipse becomes total, you actually see a partial eclipse while the moon is still crossing the sun. The closer you get to the center line, the longer the eclipse lasts, and if you go to somewhere like Rochester, it lasts a span of a couple minutes. If you are planning to view the solar eclipse from anywhere, you need these eclipse glasses. Eclipse glasses are specialized glasses made to block out all the light that could possibly be harmful to your eyes. It's very important that you wear eclipse glasses when you're viewing the eclipse, otherwise you can permanently damage your vision. If you typically wear prescription glasses and are viewing the eclipse with eclipse glasses, it's important that you wear the eclipse glasses on the outside of your prescription glasses. The lenses of your glasses might magnify light onto the eclipse glasses, making them malfunction. In order to test if your eclipse glasses are functioning properly, you should put them on and look around and make sure all you can see is the sun and maybe some super bright lights, but they would look pretty faint. It is super, super, super important to note that in Ithaca, if you're watching the eclipse, you cannot remove your eclipse glasses at any time. This means any point when you're looking up, you should be wearing eclipse glasses. It's also really important to know that you cannot at any point view the eclipse through binoculars, telescope, or even a camera without a specialized solar filter. Viewing an eclipse through binoculars, a telescope, or a camera can not only damage your eyesight, but also damage the equipment in your device. If you are traveling to the path of totality, you can remove your eclipse glasses, but only during totality, which is when the moon completely covers the sun. You know when it's safe to remove your eclipse glasses when the sun becomes dark and you can't see them anymore. It's recommended that you know exactly how long the eclipse is going to last in your location if you are witnessing totality. The moment the sun begins to peek out from behind the moon, it's no longer safe to view the eclipse without glasses. By knowing the amount of seconds it will last, you can count the time that's gone by and know when to put your glasses back on. If you don't have eclipse glasses, you can use other methods to view the eclipse. For example, you can puncture a hole in a piece of paper. This creates a pinhole projector. A pinhole projector is when the sun's light goes through a hole in a piece of paper or something else and casts an image of the sun on some sort of surface. When the moon passes in front of the sun, you'll see the circle on the ground that you would normally expect to become a crescent. And again, if you are planning to travel for totality, it's important to note that there might be very high traffic as others join you trying to see the eclipse. It's recommended that you plan to travel early, you know where you're going, and you stay in one place, especially after the eclipse when volumes of traffic are the highest. And that's everything you really need to know about the eclipse. For more science information, check out our article, The Sun's Guide to the Disappearing Sun.